you have an AI that actually has power over the world and you just give it one goal and just like keep optimizing that, most likely everybody's going to be like, yay, this is great in the beginning. Things are getting better. But um, it's almost impossible to give it exactly the right direction to optimize in. And then eventually all, all hay breaks loose, right? Nick Bostrom and others have given it examples that sound quite silly. Like what if you just want to like tell it to cure cancer or something? And that's all you tell it. Maybe it's going to decide to take over entire continents just so it can get more supercomputer facilities in there and figure out how to cure cancer backwards. And then you're like, wait, that's not what I wanted, right? We have built an economy that has is optimizing for only one thing, profit. Right? And that worked great back when things were very inefficient and then now it's getting done better. And it worked great as long as the companies were small enough that they couldn't capture the regulators. But that's not true anymore, but they keep optimizing. They realize that, that they can these companies can make even more profit by building ever more powerful AI, even if it's reckless. Optimize more and more and more and more and more. You should worry about super intelligence. I have to actually really think about that, which the, the kind of thing people assume is if you develop an AGI, that open AI, if they're the ones that do it, for example, they're going to win. But mm -hmm. you're saying, no, they're, everybody loses. Yeah, it's going to get better and better and better. And then kaboom, we all lose. That's what's going to happen. When lose and win are defined on a metric of basically quality of life, for human civilization and for Sam Altman. People, my personal guess, you know, and people can quibble with this, is that we're just gonna, there won't be any humans. That's it, that's what I mean by lose. You know, if you, if we've, we can see in history, once you have some species or some group of people who aren't needed anymore, it doesn't usually work out so well for them, right? Yeah. There were a lot of horses for, that were used for traffic in Boston and then the car got invented and most of them got, you know, well, we don't need to go there. And uh, if you look at um, humans, you know, right now, we why did the labor movement succeed and after the Industrial Revolution? Because it was needed. Mm -hmm. Even though we had a lot of Molochs and there was child labor and so on, you know, the company still needed to have workers. And that's why strikes had power and so on. If we get to the point where most humans aren't needed anymore, I think it's not, it's quite naive to think that they're going to still be treated well. You know, we say that, yeah, yeah, everybody's equal and the, the government will always, we will always protect them. But if you look in practice, groups that are very disenfranchised and don't have any actual power usually get screwed. And uh, now in, in, in the beginning, so industrial revolution, we automated away muscle work, but that got went worked out pretty well eventually because we educated ourselves and started doing working with our brains instead and, and got usually more interesting, better paid jobs. But now we're beginning to replace brain work. So we, we replaced a lot of boring stuff. Like we got the pocket calculator. So you don't have people adding, multiplying numbers anymore at work. Fine. There were better jobs they could get, but now GPT-4, you know, and the stable diffusion and techniques like this, they're really beginning to blow away some real, some jobs that people really loved having. I, it was a heartbreaking article just post just yesterday on social media I saw about this guy who, who was doing 3D modeling for gaming and he, and all of a sudden now they got this new software, he just give, says prompts and he feels this whole job that he loved just lost its meaning, you know, and, uh, I asked uh, GPT-4 to rewrite Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star in the style of Shakespeare. I couldn't have done such a good job. It was just really impressive. You've seen a lot of the art coming out here, right? So I'm all for automating away the dangerous jobs and the boring jobs. But I, I think um, you hear a lot, some arguments which are too glib. Sometimes people say, well, that's all that's going to happen. We're getting rid of the boring jobs boring, uh, tedious, dangerous jobs. It's just not true. There are a lot of really interesting jobs that are being taken away now. Journalism is getting going to get crushed. Uh, coding is going to get crushed. I, I predict uh, the 
job market for programmers, salaries are going to start dropping. I feel that AI should be built by humanity for humanity. It's for us that we're doing it. And, and um, it would make a lot more sense if we build, it, develop, figure out gradually and safely how to make all this tech. And then we think about what are the kind of jobs that people really don't want to have, you know, and automate them all away. And then we ask, what are the jobs that people really find meaning in? Like maybe taking care of children in the daycare center, maybe doing art, et cetera, et cetera. And, and even if it were possible to automate that way, we don't need to do that, right? We built these machines.